Democrats play hardball. Let's us play hardball. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. In a defiant press conference late today, President Donald Trump called the special counsel's Russia probe a democratic hoax. He insists that no evidence of collusion has been found, though investigators have issued no such conclusion. And while the president's lawyers are negotiating how the special counsel will ultimately question the president, Trump says it's unlikely he'll ever sit down with investigators at all. Here was President Trump today. Would you be willing to meet with him without condition, or would you demand that a strict set of parameters be placed around any encounter between you and the special counsel? Well, again, John, uh, there has been no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians, or Trump and Russians. No collusion. I've been in office now for 11 months. For 11 months, they've had this phony cloud over this administration, over our government. And it has hurt our government. It does hurt our government. It's a Democrat hoax that was brought up as an excuse for losing an election. And certainly, I'll see what happens. But uh, when they have no collusion, and nobody's found any collusion at any level, uh, it seems unlikely that you'd even have an interview. Well, this comes amid mounting signs that Democrats, seeing the game Republicans are playing and either covering up or distracting from the truth, are taking matters into their own hands. They're now stepping up to fight Republican efforts to hide and politicize the facts emerging from the investigations of Russian meddling and potential collusion. Today, Democrats on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee issued a comprehensive report on Russian meddling around the world, asserting that President Trump has neglected to protect this country from Russian aggression. The report finds that as much as we approach the 2018 midterm elections, the U.S. still lacks, quote, a coherent, comprehensive, and coordinated approach to deter the Russian threat. It warns that, quote, never before in American history has so clear a threat to national security been so clearly ignored by a U.S. president. And speaking this morning, the ranking Democrat on that committee, Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland, well known as a national security hawk, issued a chilling assessment of President Trump's leadership. Following attacks like Pearl Harbor, 9-11, uh, U.S. presidents have rallied the country and the world to address the challenges facing the nation. Yet today, the current president of the United States still barely acknowledges the threat posed by Mr. Putin's repeated attacks on democratic governments and institutions. Well, in a related move yesterday, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein of California decided to defy the chairman of the Judiciary Committee and release the testimony of Glenn Simpson, the founder of the research firm Fusion GPS. In his testimony, Simpson explained how he came to hire former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele to investigate Trump's connections to Russia, producing the dossier that Republicans have tried so hard to discredit. This morning, the president attacked Senator Feinstein, tweeting the fact that sneaky Dianne Feinstein, who has on numerous occasions stated the collusion between Trump and Russia has not been found, would release testimony in such an underhanded and possibly illegal way, totally without authorization, is a disgrace. Must have tough primary. I'm joined now by Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who sits on both the Judiciary and the Foreign Relations Committees. Jason Johnson is politics editor at The Root and an MSNBC contributor. And Heidi Presley is White House reporter for USA Today and an MSNBC political analyst as well. Let me go to Senator Coons on this. It seems to me the Democrats now, after watching what the Republicans have been up to in terms of distracting from, undermining, whatever, this probe of the Russian connection, are taking matters into your own hands and saying it's time to get the truth out, even if the Republicans don't want it out. That's right, Chris. Um, I support what Senator Feinstein on the Judiciary Committee did in releasing the transcripts of the Glenn Simpson interview, something, by the way, uh, that Mr. Simpson urged us to do. Uh, why? Because a number of Republican members uh, were trying to distract from or undermine uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation uh, by misleadingly suggesting that it was because of this <laughs> Steele dossier, because of this Fusion GPS-funded research, uh, that the whole investigation by the FBI 
into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia began. We now know that's not the case, that there were other sources uh, from foreign intelligence, uh, from someone in the Trump campaign um, that led the FBI to begin investigating this question. Um, and while the president in today's uh, somewhat belligerent press conference insisted there's no collusion, there's no evidence of collusion, that conclusion has not yet been reached. And I think all of us, uh, Republicans and Democrats in the Senate, have an obligation to make sure that we respond to Russia's attack on our democracy in the 2016 election and that we fully prepare for our next elections. I commend Senator Cardin on foreign relations for releasing this strong and comprehensive report you referenced that issues a real clarion call to defending America's elections. You know, uh you and I grew up, uh, me before you, I was older than you, but I have to tell you, I always grew up with the idea that the Republicans were tougher on defense. They were the hawkish yep. party. And they were the toughest on the Soviet Union all those years, and good for them. But it, now it seems to me that, that this Republican party led by Trump is, could be accused, as Ben Cardin, your neighbor from Maryland, suggested, of sort of appeasing the Russians. Why does Trump again and again cover for the Russians and say, oh, yeah, they may be doing But I'm not going to look into any of this stuff when they're going to screw with people's elections around the world. I'm not going to do any of that. Don't look at that. Why is he doing that? Why is he covering for Putin? It is really hard to come up with any coherent or positive explanation uh, for why President Trump as candidate Trump repeatedly complimented Vladimir Putin and aggravated or undermined our democratic uh, allies in Western Europe, and why as President Trump uh, he has failed to lead our allies in the Western democracies and to defend our own nation against Russia's provocations and Russia's interferences uh, in the elections of so many countries, not just the United States, Chris, uh, also Germany, uh, also France, also the UK, and a dozen other smaller countries across Western Europe. In this thoroughly detailed report by Senator Cardin, uh, he lays out the case that our president, for the first time in our <coughs> modern history, has utterly failed to respond to a direct attack on what makes America a democracy, credible, free, and fair elections. Well, do you think they might be into him on the financial end of things, that he might owe them something for past promises and financial help for his hotels and for, for his son-in-law's hotel chain? Is there money it behind all raises, this niceness? That's not yet been proven, but it certainly raises questions because the president's behavior and his conduct is dramatically out of step uh, with a long tradition bipartisan tradition of standing up and defending America's democracy and, as you put it, going back to our childhood, of Republicans being the tougher party on standing up to Russian aggression in particular. Why he's doing this, we don't have an explanation in detail or proven yet, but it certainly raises very troubling questions about whether there are financial complications or there is some sort of a uh, relationship that was started in the course of the campaign that has led him to take these unprecedented positions and to fail to protect the United States and our democracy. Well, I hope we can follow the money. Anyway, an attacking Senator Feinstein of California. So personally, President Trump may be barking up the wrong tree. In her decades-long public career, she's been known as a force to be reckoned with. From her earliest days on the San Francisco Parole Board, she upheld law and order and public confidence when Mayor George Moscone and Harvey Milk were assassinated out there. And more recently, won plaudits for her dogged pursuit of the truth about the CIA's torture program. However, Senator Feinstein was very controlled in her response today to the president's tweet. Here she goes. Can we just get your reaction to the president tweeting about you, saying that your actions about potentially releasing these transcripts, transcripts are illegal? Oh, I, I don't believe they are. And obviously, uh, I wouldn't have done it if I thought they are. The one regret I have is that I should have spoken with Senator Grassley before. And I think the American people have a right to know. Um, I don't think there, there's something that's classified. I don't think there's anything that's highly problematic. But at least it's a clearing of the air so that uh, the facts are out there. Does it offend you when the president <coughs> calls you shady in a tweet? I know you, you're well, he tends speaking, sorry, to call people names very quickly, so I'm not alone. Heidi, this is the first time I've heard somebody called sneaky for getting the truth out. I mean, she's not hiding it. She's putting out there, right out there in the public. She said, you want to know how the CIA, or rather the uh, FBI, got involved in looking into the Russian probe? Well, they got a heads up from the Australian guy. They got it way before they got this uh, dossier. And for some reason, well, we know what the reason is. Republicans still want to say it's all about the dossier. Point for point. It takes down the argument that somehow this was a uh, witch hunt, ex, you know, funded by Hillary Clinton's supported backers. And it goes through that 
that, including where the seed money comes from. Yeah. The seed money for this investigation came from the Washington Free Beacon. <laughs> and who funds that? Paul Singer, the GOP mega donor. Um, and it shows that the orders that were given to Steele were pretty simple. They were, don't draw any conclusions, you know, partisan conclusions, just get the facts about what Trump's relationship is to Russia. And it also has some embarrassing stuff in there, too. You know, Trump has always said, I don't have any ties to Russia. Well, this shows actually pretty elaborate financial ties to some of the surrounding countries where Russia parks a lot of its money. And so there were a lot of things in here that probably Republicans don't really want out there. Well, as I mentioned, Glenn Simpson's uh, testimony, which Diane Feinstein put out, undercuts the Republican argument that the Christopher Steele dossier was intended as a partisan hit job just because it was funded by the Clinton campaign originally. As Simpson explains in the transcript, which we now have, Steele felt professionally obligated to bring his findings to the FBI, not because of politics, but because, quote, he was very concerned about whether this represented a national security threat. Jason, in the real world, if you find out somebody else is screwing with your elections and is involved with it, all kinds of hanky-panky, you bring it to the authorities. You know, if you see something, say something. Right. We're all taught that on taking Amtrak. If you, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, it isn't kind. And they're making this into something that shouldn't be talked about. We ought to know why there was an FBI probe, why Comey was probably fired because he was getting to something. And here, Diane Feinstein did a public service of putting out the transcript so this guy Simpson could tell us how it all started. Well, and, and here's the thing. This is why she's not concerned. This is, I mean, you know, she was very, very nice in that sort of interview right there, but she was basically come at me. I just did what the American public needs, which is find out what this gentleman is talking about. The fact that Republicans keep wanting to keep this behind closed doors and then leak what they want to leak when it's convenient to them is what leads this to being such a problematic situation overall. And the important thing they all remember It looks like a cover-up to me. Exactly. It and, looks and like I, a cover-up. Anyway, following his attack, that's the president's on Dianne Feinstein, the president went after the probe itself, <laughs> saying... The single greatest witch hunt in American history continues. There was no collusion. Everybody, including the Dems, know there was no collusion. And yet on, on and on it goes. Russia and the world is laughing at the stupidity they are witnessing. Republicans should finally take control. Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley was asked about that tweet today. Let's listen to him. Senator, he, the president said that you should take, the Republicans should take control of the investigation in light of the release of this transcript. Are you losing we, control of this investigation, and should you regain control? Um, I don't know what the president has in mind, and, and I th don't think a better comment until I have a discussion with the president on that point. And I don't intend to have a discussion with the president on that point. And I hope he doesn't call me and tell me the same thing that you said he said. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator, because Senator, it looks like your older partner there is wise enough to stay away from this one. What is, uh, what is the, the situation now, as you see it, the lay of the land in terms of this probe? Are the Republicans now worried that this thing's getting somewhere in terms of the finances of the president. This is going to go beyond possible uh, collusion to the question of what Trump's business relationships were that may have preceded it and given it context and perhaps affected how he has been dealing with the Russians, as you were talking a few moments ago. Or is it because they really think they've won the game and there's nothing there? Which is it that causes them to try to cover this thing up now? Well, there's a lot of different Republican actors here in Congress and in the administration, so I think it's a mix of both, Chris. Um, I am genuinely concerned uh, about special counsel Robert Mueller, his ability to complete this investigation, to see it all the way through, and a number of Republicans have joined in efforts to try uh, and protect Robert Mueller, make it harder for him to be fired by the president, uh, because I think all of us, many of us recognize uh, that it's really in President Trump's best interest, it's in the best interest of the rule of law and our society and our democracy uh, for this to be seen through to the finish and for us to know once and for all whether there is evidence of collusion. For the Judiciary Committee, um, our jurisdiction covers the Department of Justice, the FBI, um, and I would hope that Chairman Grassley uh, would change direction and be willing to work more closely with Ranking Member Feinstein and that we could re-engage in a constructive way. Uh, their staff counsel have been disagreeing and um, they have been fighting now for several months over which witnesses to bring in, which direction to take this. Uh, I think there's been serious efforts by some Republican senators uh, to take us off track by focusing on things that date back many years, um, allegations about Hillary Clinton, um, rather than focusing on what is yes. right in front of us, uh, whether or not there was obstruction of justice in the firing of the FBI director, uh, and whether or not we are adequately prepared to protect our democracy from meddling in the next election. That's what we should be working on. 
there are real threats to this, and there are some here, I think, in the Capitol who are throwing sand in the gears and trying to distract, and there's others uh, who I suspect genuinely believe that there's nothing to this at the end of the day. Regardless okay. of their views, I think it's in our best interest to make sure it gets to the end, that Robert Mueller is able to finish a full investigation. Only a few minutes, a minute here left. Heidi and Jason, uh, do you think the Democrats have said we're not going to sit around and let the Republicans hide this thing? I think they realize that they've given them now well over a year. We have another election coming up. Not only do we not have a strategy for tackling what may happen with the Russians, we don't even have an autopsy of, for example, what happened with the social media companies. This stands in contrast not just to Pearl Harbor and major events like September 11th, but even to, to, to smaller investigations like Watergate, um, like Whitewater, which didn't have national security implications when committees actually staffed up and devoted why the resources. Why are the Republicans backing Trump on this cover-up of refusing to see the Russian threat in the same way they went along with on the tax thing. Right. I know Republicans love to cut taxes for the rich. That's sort of endemic. But why are they going along with this Russian cover-up? Why, why are they so pro-Moscow all of a sudden? Well, well, it's two things. One, because... They never were. The, the pro-Moscow thing started happening under Obama. Remember, it was like they thought he was a stronger leader because yeah. it was hostility to our sitting president. But the other thing to remember is this, and this is what you always see with Trump. It's not just the Russian collusion, because remember, collusion may or may not be illegal. That's an impeachment issue. They're concerned about obstruction of justice, because that's where this is really a problem. Trump oh. keeps saying to himself, you call me a liar and a thief, I'm not a thief, right? But he's really concerned about obstruction of justice, and that's where the Democrats are going I don't to see the party of Ronald Reagan here anymore. I mean, no. the, the part of Reagan that was anti-communist. Anyway, thank you, Chris Hoon, senator from Delaware. Thank you so much. Jason Johnson, sir, and Heidi Presley, so much. Coming up.